Hey everybody out there in BeastNet land, Brother Boggs here, I want to invite you down to the grand opening of Connector Juice Bar, 118 Broadway, Seattle, Washington. They make freshly made juices, smoothies, and fruit bowls. Just clean, healthy eating that tastes just as good as it makes you feel. Grand opening, November 17th, going through the end of the year. Come on down and check it out. Proud sponsors of BeastNet Podcast. BeastNet Podcast. Sponsored in part by James Safety Services, OCR Buddy, and supported by the fitness community. Here we discuss all things fitness related, running, rucking, mental health and preparedness, and of course, obstacle course racing. Welcome to the BeastNet. Hey everybody out there in BeastNet land. Today you got Brother Boggs. I'm talking with Land Matthews from Berserker Brew. And he's coming at you. He's got a race coming up here in a couple of weeks. He's got some of the best coffee out there if you actually want to wake up and feel the uh, the juice. It's also got a little bit of fitness stuff going on. Uh, yeah. Land, who are you? Tell us about you. Thanks, Boggs. Yeah, so most people that have been running OCR uh, east of the Mississippi, they've seen a crazy uh, high-energy guy in a red and white tent at OCR events from Georgia to, to Ohio to in Illinois and that, that's Berserker Brew Coffee. I started a, a coffee company uh, in 2017. I, I wrote it in my journal that I was going to create the world's greatest coffee for athletes. And um, I'm actually an OCR guy. Fell in love with OCR. Did my first one in Miami in 2012, and I was hooked. It wasn't running. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't going to the gym. It was, and it was different every time. And I loved it. So I, I got this concept that, that, that once I got a coffee company that, well, somehow I tied in to going to events. You know, I, I said, well, if I can go to events, may, maybe I'll just have my own OCR racing team and get some, jer- get some jerseys, get a legend board and make me some jerseys and let's go race. And I'm telling you, Box, for four years, I'm having the time of my life. Yeah, I can't say enough about legend board and their beautiful jerseys like the one I'm wearing right now. Yeah. yeah. Custom design, beast net, you know, you can get yours at, uh, Legendborn.com forward slash bees net. Berserker Brew Jersey. And, uh, you know, the coffee company is uh, extraordinary. We branched out. We do triathlons. I sponsor a triathlon team. Um, I sponsor a bare knuckle fighter. Um, you know, my goal is to connect with, with athletes that, you know, they need a shot, right? They need, they, you know, no one's heard of them, right? They, they, they want, they want to do something new. And, um, you know, I'm always interested. I, 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 li- I like uh, finding that, that one athlete that, you know, just has got, got hunger, right? I'm old. I'm in my 50s. I've got battle damage. I'm a recovering alcoholic. You know, for me to be a world-class athlete, that, 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 maybe that time's passed. But for me to help somebody young, somebody to you know, get some gas money to go fight, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to help because people love my coffee. I mean, uh, I didn't realize how successful this coffee brand was going to be when I started it because, well, I, I got a website and I got coffee. Nobody ever bought it because they didn't know I existed. But once I got out, once I got out and I got to, um, you know, talk to athletes, whether it was an obstacle course race or maybe um, um, a trail run, an uh, ultra run, a uh, bike race, well, people, people love the coffee. You know, and, you know, there's nothing crazy about my coffee. I don't put protein in it. I don't put creatine in it. it and when I call it engineered for athletes, all I'm saying is you don't have to put anything in it. It's so damn good. You don't have to put fat, sugar, nothing in it. So I do have Kraken's release, which, you know, I've created all five uh, types of Berserker Brew coffee, but Kraken's release is my favorite because, well, it's got a little extra caffeine. And I don't know if you've noticed yet, but I'm a pretty high energy guy. And, um, you know, uh, Kraken's release is very popular at races. You know, it's just fun. It's just fun becoming part of the whole OCR community. You know, being up here in Seattle, I should probably uh, talk about Kraken's release when I'm talking to people at hockey games, seeing how we have a team that right. just started called the Kraken. That's right. I mean, people are like, well, why aren't you out there out in front of the, the hockey arena in Seattle? I'm like, I should be. You know, the thing about the, the hockey team is they, they signed on for big national names and big money. But uh, I tell you what, the local teams out here, 
they they like the small guys. So I'll get out there and I'll talk about it uh, when I'm at the games, since I'm going to be at quite a few games. Well, it, it's funny because I, I I actually have several, you know, not many, but I have several customers in Seattle, and 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 it, it's it's just funny because people people will travel, OCR people travel, trail runners travel. I I talk to people come in the tent. And I'm like, where are you from? You know, and, and they're from all over, and so you know that's the kind of the marketing strategy that I've had is I don't spend a lot on uh, Google ads or anything. I go find the athletes, sit right down in the middle of them, and just talk to them. Here, have a free coffee. Tell me what you think. Now, our race. Um, Probably the best advertising you could do. Yeah. You know, you know, a good race uh, will have 1,000 people. Great race, 2,000 people. Um, I think the biggest thing, uh, well, there's one fun. I don't know if you've ever done it, but you should try it if you like it. If you like cold weather, come in and do the abominable snow race up in Wisconsin in January. You got loops. It's five mile, 10 mile, 15 mile loop in the snow. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's 20 degrees or 20 below, they're going to run that race. And, and as the coffee guy, I'm very popular. Yeah, that particular race, uh, Kate West told me about that one because uh, yep. she's from up there. A uh, yep. little, call herself little zoomies or whatever. She's like four foot something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's a uh, little cold for my weather. I'll do the resolution run and, and get yeah. wet for a minute. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too far behind you. So my muscles start to ache when you get that, uh, that 20, 30 degree weather. So yeah, I, not a huge fan of that. That's why I'm going to. <laughs> Well, my, my last, my bad, last big, um, was 2019. I didn't race. Well, nobody raced in 2020 and 2021. I've been selling so much coffee. I haven't raced. I mean, I, I did the Highlander assault, um, in Northern Illinois this year. Um, but my last race was that stupid cold rain race in, in South Carolina, November of 19, where the, the, the forecast was going to be, uh, 59 in rain. Okay. Well, I can deal with 59 rain. Actual air temperature at temperature 38 in rain. Now that sucked. Did a beast. <laughs> it's a 38 rain. Uh, just a giant mud pit. It, it, that was, that, I was like, what the hell am I doing? What? what? I, I got to pick a new hobby. This is stupid. <laughs> the uh, first year I did the Seattle marathon, it was about 40 degrees with 20 degree, 20 mile an hour crosswinds and rain. And, uh, yeah, you're just sitting there going, what the heck am I doing out here? Yeah. And every time you stopped at an aid station, it was just cold water. That doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I, my strategy with, with Berserker Brew Coffee is to just continue to meet athletes from all over. Uh, try, to, try to win them over on the benefits, not just my coffee, because I do have a recovery tea that is super powerful. Um, it's a recovery tea made out of ginger ginseng, ashwagandha, and turmeric with a little black pepper so the, the turmeric stays in your in your system. And, you know, uh, we, we both know a guy named Joey McGlamory down in uh, the south, and he just uh, ran went up with a group in Kilimanjaro, and I, I, I helped that, that group with uh, giving them coffee and tea, and he said, man, that, that tea helped. It, it, it helped us with fatigue, you know, with altitude. We just stopped and drink tea. We just felt better. So, you know, the, the tea, um, I, I created it because of the Spartan World Championships in Vermont in 2012, about mile 13. I looked at the dashboard of my body, and it was all red lights. Hips were gone, knees were gone, ankles were gone, and I'm just walking. Everybody else on my team quit. It was a hard, hard race. <laughs> and... Um, Two guys, 20 years older than me, ran by me. Now, they weren't running fast, but they were running, got walking. And what pissed me off, excuse my language, they were probably 20 years older than I was. And uh, they were talking about dosing turmeric the day before the race. And I'm just listening to their conversation. They're like, I feel pretty good. I don't, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel any inflammation. I'm not hurting. And I'm like, well, I don't even know what turmeric is. So nine years later, I have a, a tea and, it, and it's, I mean, I got marathoners that swear by it, OCR people, long-term trail runners. You know, it, 
you know, for something, I didn't create the concept of, uh, of coffee, but this tea, I, I take a lot of pride in it because it didn't exist before I, before I did it. Now coming up here shortly, uh, pretty Mike and I are doing the Seattle marathon again. And, uh, I think I'm going to have to get some of that sent out here before we, uh, yeah. And Let me hook that up and see how that does. My recommendation is a guy, I'm about 6'5", 220. So I would drink almost a half a gallon the day before the race. Yep. And then the morning of yep. another quarter gallon. And then as soon as I'm done, another quarter gallon. And you, you won't be sore the next day. And it, it's just amazing. No caffeine, yes. no caffeine, no sugar. So you, you, I mean, if you run with a camelback, put it in your camelback. Yep. That's exactly how we run. So, yep. Awesome. Give that a shot. Uh. Do you like the beast net? Do you want to keep hearing it? Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more at beast pod. So you've been in OCR for nine years now. Yep. And uh, you branched out recently. And not only are you talking to racers and helping racers get the best coffee in OCR, you're also going to invite them out to Kentucky to, yeah. to run a race, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so what happened with that? Yeah. Uh, well, Boggs, I got to tell you, I'm kind of a moron. I, I am. And when I walk in a room, I know I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I am lucky. I just happen to be in the right place at most times in my life. And uh, I, I met a, a, a sharp, driven woman down in, uh, from northern Georgia named Julie Wolf. She owns Phoenix Race. And um, yep. she, she and I worked um, the, uh, oh, the OCR there in Chattanooga in 2019. And uh, uh, scenic, uh, the Scenic City uh, uh, OCR. And, um, mud run. Yeah. A mud run. And, and, and I like, I liked how she did business. I liked how, you know, she just, she, she was like me, high energy, positive can do. So she says, well, I run races all over. I, I, I do races all over. So I've supported Julie as a sponsor of a couple of her, of her obstacles. Um, you know, uh, went down to Mississippi. Um, you know, I, that's a hike for a coffee guy to come back. I'm happy to do it. Help, help Phoenix race. Um, but, but those races that she puts on there in Chattanooga, North Georgia, very good races. And she approached me in the spring of this year and said, I have never done a race in Kentucky. You got it. You got any way to, to, to help me find a place, a venue. And, uh, I grew up here. I, I, my family's been here since this was part of Virginia. So, um, uh, I reached out and, and found some people that, uh, were happy to help about 300 acres. And um, it's called the Berserker Battle OCR. And uh, it's gonna be a week from Saturday on the 13th of November. Um, you know, one of the things that I, that I wanna make sure that everybody sees is these are, this is the men's overall champion trophy. That's Vermont granite with OCR out of stainless steel. That is an heirloom trophy right there. And the women's division gets one too. And um, we're gonna we're gonna have first heat about 8.30, right in Simpsonville, Kentucky, 13th of November, and it's a speed course. I mean, there's gonna be some, the level of Delta, there's gonna be some uh, technical challenge. Um, but it, it, in, order to, in order to win this thing, in order to win those challenge, those trophies, you gotta be fast. It's a must, uh, you know, a, a, obstacle must pass you you gotta you gotta in, uh, finish every obstacle to to, to, to enter into the, the podium we're excited um you know it's it, it's it's kind of fun starting something new because we've never done an ocr in central kentucky you know louisville we call it the golden triangle there, there's a there, there's a there's an area of kentucky between louisville lexington and cincinnati ohio that makes kind of a rough left-handed right triangle this is about the most beautiful place in the world. And this, and you know, it's the saddlebred horse country, a capital of the world. It's the thoroughbred horse country, a capital of the world. You know, if you've never come to Kentucky, come to Kentucky just to, to race and just after the race, go for a drive. I mean, it'll blow you mind. 
So Central Kentucky, it's going to be a must-pass obstacle. I've been to, to one of Julie's races personally. I went to uh, in Meridian, Mississippi back in uh, April. And, and okay. I've been talking with Julie for a couple of years now because all throughout COVID, there was nothing, nothing going on. And she actually okay. managed to pull off a couple of races. That's right. And so I was very intrigued by the fact that she was pulling off races when everything else was shut down. That's right. And uh, her and I and Russ, or I guess her and Russ technically put together OCR Strong. And, of course, I was the first guy out there with my hand up saying, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> um, God, she was just an enterprising woman that just keeps going and just doesn't I stop. Love hanging out with her. Uh, Jason uh, Fee, he's, he's out at my farm. He, he's here in Kentucky, came in today to build the course over the next nine days. And he's staying out at my at Tavassan Farm, my place. And. I don't think those Southern people like the cold much because, because uh, he, he was already firing up the wood stove about an hour ago. And I'm like, it's only about 50. I mean, <laughs> so, but it's going to be a great course. <laughs> J Jason builds a great course. And, you know, um, I, I think there's going to be some surprises for people who run, run her courses before, because she's going to have some obstacles she's never had before. So, you know, it's been fun uh, learning the ins and outs of, 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 of like the OCR business side of it. I really, on the OCR uh, circuit this year, I really have gotten really, uh, you know, tied in with Savage Race. Savage Race is, um, uh, you know, they hit Ohio, Georgia, um, Chicago, a lo lot of the thing, a lot of the Florida, right? Their Savage Race is, is the week of my race. <laughs> um, you know, uh, but, yeah. uh, it, you know, my strategy with providing coffee to racers, I basically, if you're 500 miles from Louisville, I'll come see you. But for Savage Race, I'll extend because I, I really like the product that they, that they create. I, I, like, I like the environment. You know, one of the things that, you know, uh, shame on me, but I'm kind of borrowing from Savage Race is the festival venue. So, like, if you go to Savage Race in Dallas, Georgia, well, there'll be the coffee guy and there'll be a watermelon person. And, the, and then and, and the thing is, they've got tables and chairs for teams to sit at. And, and, and you know, and they've got adult beverages for after the race. And, and here's what I like. People come, they race in the morning, and if they paid, you know, they can race again in the afternoon, but they stay. And, it, and it's such a fun environment. You know, on a hot day in Georgia, well, hell, I'll sell nine gallons of cold brew. I mean, I'm happy to go down to Georgia for that. Um, the, the nice thing is, is with, with them, as I understand, it's more of a family friendly. Your friends can hang out. The rest of your team can hang out. Um, I don't think they charge spectators right now. I, I think they probably will if they don't, because it seems like that's the way everyone's going. But, you know, a certain national company used to provide environment about like that when they first started, and it's kind of gone away. Yeah. And uh, part of the reason why we've kind of, as, as an OCR team, the BeastNet team, we've kind of phased a little bit away from them and stuck with more of the local races because there's just so much more fun. I mean, you fly down in my case to, to Louisville, Kentucky, and you go to this race and, and it's not going to be, let's just go run three miles and go home. It's let's hang out all day long. Let's watch these other people. Let's go run it. At, at, one thing about Julie, let's go run it again. Yeah. She don't care. Well, she wants you out there having fun. Yeah. And, and, and the fun thing about the berserker battle is I, I, one of my, my revenue streams here in Louisville is I do 10 farmer's markets a week. And one, one of our, our favorite things wow. is Sunny Acre Farms. It's a, it's, a, it's a family farm right out of here and in, in, right outside of Louisville. Well, they make the best, about the de best sausage, ha uh, sausage egg biscuit in the morning ever. Well, heck, I got them to come out to Berserker Battle. We're going to have tables, chairs, full breakfast, um, you know, it, it's going to be cold. I mean, no, it's November in Kentucky. It, it, it's, it, it's going to be cool. But just imagine, you come in, get a hot cup of coffee and a sausage, egg, and biscuit right off the farm. Heck, you might not even run. You just sit there and have breakfast. You guys going to have a bonfire set up at all? Hope so. Hope so. We're, we're still, 
um, the crops are, it's been so wet here. We're still trying to get the crops out of the way. So maybe by Wednesday, we'll know where the bonfire is going to be. Well, maybe this, maybe by like Friday night, we'll know where the bonfire is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, I, I did a cold race back in, uh, back in late April in Randall, Washington, which is a smaller mountain community here. Huh. And it was a very cold race, but it was real nice once you finished and you got to go down the big slide into the big old puddle of water. And then yeah. you went and stood next to the bonfire and dried out. So I hope you get that bonfire going because you got those cold mornings in Kentucky. That'll be nice. Yeah, that would be, that will be nice. Yeah, I, I, I have, uh, I mean, that, that stupid race down in South Carolina, my last big one, I didn't wait. I was so frozen and cold. I just got in the truck and drove home. Six hours in the car, just wet because I needed to heat in the truck. I, I couldn't take another minute outside. Yeah, that's, it's miserable when it's like that. And it's nice when you got something to warm you up. Um, got to have some. Does your business need first aid, AED, OSHA, flagging, or other safety training? James Safety Services is your one-stop shop. Find them on Facebook today at James Safety Services WA and ask for a quote on hosting your training needs. Well, so if I weren't busy, too busy um, and with the coffee company, I've decided, well, I do these crazy schedules making coffee. When you're in the coffee business, you have to have the coffee ready for when people are ready to drink coffee. And generally, that's it in the morning. So I listen to podcasts. And I'm a firm believer is that, that you're the, the sum of the five people that you hang out with the most. And if you hang out with winners, you'll end up a winner. And if you hang out with losers, you'll hang out a loser. So when I'm making coffee, I listen to podcasts and I listen to motivational speakers. And I listen to people that basically never whine or complain or woe is me. They're always like, what can we do next? And I'm telling you one night, I'm making coffee. It's got to be about two o'clock in the morning and, and I, and I'm listening to YouTube and it's Ray Lewis, the old linebacker from, from my Ravens. And he's talking about a deck of cards. He, he would play, he would do push-ups with a deck of cards. He, he'd flip over a 10, he'd do 10 push-ups. He do, uh, uh, he'd flip over a five, he'd do five push-ups. I'm telling you, I'm making coffee at two o'clock in the morning and I'm like, that's a great idea. You make a deck that you can push up. <laughs> you, but, but I, here's, what, here's how I changed it. And this is why I'm just kind of a lucky moron. I'm like, I'm going to make it for OCR. So if I weren't so busy with the coffee company, you'd think that I'd be too busy to do anything else. I started another company. So here's my deck of cards. Berserker Strong Fitness. 52 cards, two jokers. The goal is to do the 400, take the jokers out and do the, do the, the 52 cards. That's four, four suits. You got burpees, mountain climbers, squats, and plank ups. It's 400 reps. And, um, you know, uh, uh Miss Wendy Green down in South Carolina, she, she's an OCR badass. Um, well, she, she runs with my jersey on and makes me so proud because she's, she's much tougher than I am. But she's got the world record. She did this whole deck. This whole deck. That's 400 reps. 400 reps in 24 minutes, 40 seconds. That's 100 burpees. That's 100 burpees, 100 plank ups, 100 squats and 100 mountain climbers in 2440. I saw her down at uh, Savage Race, Georgia in, um, oh, I guess it's September. And I said, all right, Wendy, I'm gonna challenge you to a 15 card showdown. Cause I've been practicing. Bye, well, she smoked me. She, she so tough, she smoked me. God, that, that girl is tough. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just lucky to know her. So Berserker, Berserker Strong Fitness started this year in 2021. Uh, it's branched out. Uh, when, I, when I signed the lease for the coffee factory, it's big. Um, I produce cold brew here. Um, uh, do all my, you know, my, my, my shipping, all my inventory, all my, all, my, 
all my stuff. I, you know, I, I have a centralized coffee headquarters now, but it's still too big. <laughs> so um, I said, well, let, let, let's put an OCR, let's put a training, let's, let, let's get some equipment in here. Let's train. So uh, Berserker Brew Fitness, uh, Berserker Strong Fitness, um, it's got its own agogi. You can come to Louisville, work out with me, and um, it's intense. Um, I, I really enjoy coming, people coming in, people coming in from all walks of life. People, people haven't worked out in 20 years. I had, I had a pair of 60 year old, uh, they've been married for almost as long as I've been alive. They been, they came out every Monday to a park in part of Louisville and flipped tires and carried sandbags and threw, um, Nordic hammers and did all this stuff that I'm creating a workout to get you ready for an OCR, but they did it because they thought it was more fun than going to the YMCA. <laughs> you know, you hand somebody a sledgehammer and say, hit, hit that tire. There, there, there's a curiosity factor to that. And then you get, a, yeah. you, know, you, you get a 40 pound multi multi bag and say, you know, now flip that up. And, and give me 10 squats. I think they like that more than putting plates on a bar and doing squats in the gym. And so I'm on to something here. It's in, it's in, it's in its youth. It's in its, you know, it's in, it's in its first breath. This, this of what Berserker Strong is, is going to be, it, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a, an essence of what it's going to be. This deck, next deck, going to be CrossFit deck. The deck after that is going to be yoga. And just imagine this workout. You take the yoga deck and the OCR deck and shuffle them together. Now, who on this planet has ever yep. done 15 burpees followed by four dog downward dogs, right? I mean, I mean, I really want people, <laughs> uh, I really want people to love being healthy. I am so sick and tired of the American diet, the American, you know, the, 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 the here's what I'm sick and tired of, Bugs. The imagery of success. Uh, I fell for it, right? When I was growing up, my, you know what my hero was? James Bond. Well, if you read those <laughs> books, that guy's a drug user. He's a, I mean, he's an alcoholic. And I kind of turned out to be my hero, right? Because that's that was my alcoholic. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I mean, if if you read the books, I mean, he's always having a you know vodka martini, shaking not stirred. But in the books, Benzedrine, he's always wired, you know. And you know, I I read those books at you know at 12, 13, 14. I'm like, well, James Bond's about the coolest place in the world, you know. But I don't watch. I can't watch television anymore. I can't watch, you know, um, yeah. beer commercials. If, if those commercials imply the only, only time that you're ever popular or happy is if you've got a drink in your hand. And I'm like, yeah. I fell for that. I fell for that because you just, it's, it's just beat into your head. So, you know, we don't watch television anymore. Television doesn't exist in our house, and, and I, I feel great. I mean, I'm 54 in 12 days. I'm stronger than I was 20 years ago. I'm faster than I was 10 years ago. Why would I ever turn on a source of energy that's Take trying it to away? Me? Yeah, that's trying to kill me. I mean, I don't even get, I mean, I, I don't even get the commercials about drugs like pharmaceuticals. Yeah. They try to tell you, you may have a disease that we may have a fix for that may fix it, but may cause other things, but we'll fix those too. But when you're may cause side effects, including death, I'm sorry. I'll just take life. <laughs> I'll just take life. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Uh, the, you can get the deck at uh, berserkerstrong.com. Yeah. Uh, you, 
you can watch the compressed video of uh, uh, Miss Wendy Green do the, the world record. Um, if anybody wants to take that challenge and do a time compression video and beats 2440, well, their video replaces hers. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I like competition. I think life is basically built around competition. And, um, and sometimes we forget that in, in the name of, well, we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or we don't, we want everybody to win. Well, okay. But there's a consequence to that kind of line of thinking. And I think we're kind of stuck in that right now. Yep. And that uh, you get back to mandatory obstacle completion. Yeah. Um, versus some companies you can run up, touch an obstacle, drop, do 30 quick burpees and keep running. You know, there's a big difference between, um, God, one of my first years racing back when terrain race used to pay out money. Um, yeah. So this is probably five, six years ago. They used to pay out money to the top three, right? Yeah. I'm out there and this gal that I know, she's one of the fastest people I know. There's one obstacle she just couldn't put her hands and legs together to do. And yeah. she's there for probably 20 minutes. She's already lost the race, but yeah. she is not going to give up her band. She's yeah. just sitting there trying it over and over again. She'd have to wait for a couple people to go and yeah. then she'd do it again because she would not give up her man. She was going to finish that race. If they had to carry her out on a stretcher at the end, she was going to figure out that obstacle. Yep. And, and that's that competition, that motivation, that drive that's missing these days. And, and it comes back to the participation trophies. I'm not a huge fan of those. You know, my kids have all done sports that had trophies for first, second, third. You know, they haven't done anything where you get a participation. Here's your ribbon for showing up, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and it, it, we're, we're, we're basically selling children a lie if we think that, well, um, ninth place is, I mean, it, it kind of depends. It kind of depends on you know, on, on the child, on the athlete, but there were days and, and, and I don't want to, you know, just kind of get off the rails here. But when I was a kid, I was a terrible athlete because I was just, I, I was put together with spare parts. I'm six, five, two twenty now, but I was just tall and skinny when I was a kid. I couldn't do anything. I, I had no power, no force. Couldn't, there was nothing. And when I was a little kid, it was just ridiculous. I was just this rubber band. I had no muscle tone whatsoever. So I play, I wanted to play baseball. I wanted to play baseball. And I'm telling you, boys, I would say until the age of 10, I struck out 80% of the time. But there was something about not quitting. It never conceived to me. I never thought, well, it, 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 you know, it, 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 I never thought about quitting. So about age 11, yeah, got a little growth spurt, huh? Put a little muscle on and um, got a little coaching, right? You always need a little coaching. Yeah. I'll, never, I'll never forget it. Guy said, turn your back foot in. You're not bringing your hips around fast enough. My batting average in high school varsity baseball was 440. Now, now, from that kid that struck out, if somebody had told me, well, you, you're okay, you get to strike out all the time, and we, that's okay, it wasn't okay with me. I wanted to get better. So that's what I'm trying to get my kids to do. My kids do, uh, you know, full contact taekwondo. They go in there and fight strangers. I think it's about the coolest yeah. thing ever that, you know, that a kid – at 13 has to kind of look into the eyes of another kid and try to score three points. I just love it. I just love it. Um, I, you know, I, I just, it's just amazing to me, but OCR to me, um, it, it, it's mental, physical. I mean, it, it's certainly, you know, that stupid rainy thing in, in um, South Carolina in 2019 in November, it was two years ago, and it was the 13th of November. I remember. It was. I mean, it was emotional. It broke people. It broke people, and they just went. They just quit. Right. 
the, the obstacles didn't quit. The obstacles were almost kind of a side note. It was the mud. You couldn't run. They were, you were gonna go 15 miles basically on your knees. So that meant your day was gonna be long. I mean, no one's gonna get through this in three and a half hours. This is a five, six, seven hour ordeal. And people were like, screw it, I ain't doing this. But you get to the finish line, you look around, you look in the eyes of people who got that finishing medal. That's who you want to be in the boat when the when all when the hell, you know, I measure like Wendy Green. I mean, Julie, those are the people. If they are ever in trouble, that's who you fight for. Because they fight for you. Yep. They're part of your five. They're the ones that you want on your team. That's right. Well, we talked so, about the coffee company, and we talked about fitness, and we uh, we talked about the cards. Talked about the cards. I tell you what, I'm going to pick a card for you, Boggs. You're going to have a, your first virtual pick a card. You tell me when to stop. Right there. All right. Each card has a mantra on it. Fifty-two different mantras. So your mantra is. Fall down five times, get up six equals victory. <laughs> and, and, and I think that's why I like these cards. Sometimes I just read the mantras, <laughs> right? Yeah. Get out of my own head. Sit down, and, you know, in the agogi. I've got the most odd thing in my agogi where I've got, I mean, I've, I've got people that cry come out of my agogi working out. I got a rocking chair. I come in here at 4, 15 in the morning, start, start the morning sessions. I'll sit in a rocking chair and read mantras just to get it, get into the game. Just get into it. Um, and I'm telling you, it ain't work. It ain't work because I'm impacting people's lives in a way that for 32 years in the bottom of a vodka bottle, I didn't care about. I didn't want anybody else to have a good life. I didn't want to be a, I did not want anybody else to have a better life than me. I, you know, there's two ways. Tony Robbins always says there's two ways to have the, the tallest building in town. You can go build it or you can burn everybody else's down. And for 32 years, I was just kind of an a-hole. Well, there you are. Yeah, you just wanted to burn everybody down around you so you could stand up. That's right. Look at me. Look at me. And uh, it's all the difference in the world. And it's that, all about that, that, that damn counselor and that nine-page you know, letter to myself, my list of resentments that tricked me. She got me good, but the light bulb came on and I'm so grateful for her. When we uh, post up this episode, I'm going to put the links to all your, your cards, your coffee, your race. Of course, you know, I've already talked a little bit with Julie about the race and uh, it sounds like it's going to be a heck of a time. Now we've talked to you about it and it sounds even better. So I can't wait to see what Jason comes up with because, you know, they always say some some funny words about him because he's a evil genius when it comes to making these things. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, and and you know to watch him work, you you don't really want to get in his way because his level of focus is it's intense. It, it, I mean, it's like genius at work. Leave him be. Is there anything that you'd want to say to the listeners uh, kind of in closing, just uh, words of wisdom? Or... Here's my two cents, everybody. Um, we, we're coming through, we're, this is two years of just, none of us have experienced anything since the advent of COVID and the loss of, I don't know, um, normality. And here's my challenge to everybody. I challenge everybody to get up and race. Get up and be stronger, faster, better than you were a week ago, a year ago. Because if you do that, people will look at that and go, huh, they can do that. Maybe I can do that because what I see now is fear and complacency and well, you know, I've been thinking about working out, but you know, I, 
I just don't want to join a gym because I don't want to wear a mask. You don't have to join a gym to get shape. I, 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 all summer I did this deck of cards in a park <laughs> outside at 7.15 in the morning. Just, I, just, I just challenge all the listeners to get in better shape, run faster, run harder, be stronger than you've ever been. That's what I got. That is an awesome bit of closing advice there. You can let COVID get you down or you can get out there and you can kick its ass and do something to make yourself better. So awesome. Uh, thanks, Bland, for coming on. Hey, everybody out there in BeastNet land. Brother Boggs here. I want to invite you down to the grand opening of Connect to a Juice Bar. 118 Broadway, Seattle, Washington. They make freshly made juices, smoothies, and fruit bowls. Just clean, healthy eating that tastes just as good as it makes you feel. Grand opening, November 17th, going through the end of the year. Come on down and check it out. Proud sponsors of BeastNet Podcast. Thanks for listening to the BeastNet Podcast. If you haven't done it yet, find us on Facebook. Like and share the podcast. Give us a review on iTunes or Spotify. All these things will help to expand the show in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think and what you'd like to hear. Yeah.